Breaker Breaker 9er 9er, we have a uh, jackknifed 18-wheeler uh, up here on I-81. Uh, we, uh, we need a wrecker up here as soon as possible. Also, the lot lizards up here have got some sort of rash, and I'm um, wanting to make sure that everyone knows about that. So if you're stopping around in the Tri-Cities area, be on the lookout for the lot lizards and the, and the sussy itch. All right. Breaker Breaker, thank you again. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say I've heard plenty of horror stories about truckers and because that's the thing they've said that uh, like all these women and all these like men lot lizards that go missing and are never seen again and it's just like ooh that's yeah it's it, it's pretty scary when you when you think about it and they, you, you know funny enough there was actually a uh, a movie that came out called Suspect Zero I don't know if you ever heard of it. Uh, basically, it, it was a little silly, but it basically said that all murders in the country are traced, uh, are basically inspirations by this one, like, most murders are, like, the inspiration of this one person who's going around killing people, and basically it inspires other people to commit horrible acts and everything like that. Yeah, a bit silly, because that's not how murder works, but... They basically traced it down to a trucker who was, like, going around the country and killing random people in random places uh, randomly. And basically, you know, it, it basically just was inspiring all the murder, which, you know, that's, once again, it's not how murder works. But I saw that and I was just like, I was like, it's a bit silly, but, eh, mystery's interesting at least. Uh, as for, um, as for, uh, you know... Just this right here, in terms of the, uh, <laughs> in terms of uh, just truckers. I, I've I know some truckers. I have some truckers in my family, like logging truckers and long haul truckers. Um, you know, and and they're, I know one trucker. you know, one. Yeah. Cool. Not in person, but online. Oh, okay. My friend Solus that I used to play PUBG with. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, me, I'm, I, I'm, I'm family members and friends who are truckers, and honestly, they're, they're decent people. I mean, as far as I know, I mean, if all of a sudden I wake up one morning and I find out that my uncle Jeff has like, has like a freezer full of body parts in his basement, then I'm going to be like, well, shows how much of a good judge of character I am. <laughs> But, yeah, my, my uncle's, like, I, I'm using a pseudonym. I'm not actually, like, I, I can't really, I'm not going to say his name on here. But my uncle Jeff, wink. Um, my name Jeff. My name, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> he, uh, he's a decent dude. He's been a long-haul truck driver for the better part of, like, 30 years. He's driven all the way to the West Coast and back. He's driven to Canada. He's driven through Mexico. Uh, he did, uh, he did a stint of, like, of, like, driving, uh, like, driving, uh, like, uh, he did military contracts where he actually, like, hauled tanks and stuff like that with his rig and everything, and it was, it was actually really cool, um, I actually thought that that was, uh, that he got to haul, like, a big-ass tank around and everything, it was like an Abrams, and he basically, like, took it to a, uh, to a military base in Georgia, uh, and then, yeah, it, it's, uh, it took me until you said military base to realize you weren't talking about like one of those big like round like oh tanks oh. full of liquid. Oh no 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 no! He hauled that all the no, time. He had an actual no. military tank. <laughs> That's dope. You know, the Larry the Cable Guy actually had a great bit about how you know you can make a job sound more important than it actually is by like by like changing up the words in it. I am a petroleum transportation engineer. Hmm. Versus like I, I used to he's be, a gas truck driver. I used to be the third key at Fye, but we called it the second assistant store manager because it sounded more important. There you go. <laughs> so that's the thing. Uh, when when that joke happened, my my uncle was he heard that joke and he was just like he was just like, you know, I've been playing down my life so so hard. I need to start calling myself a transportation engineer not a truck driver it make me sound more important yeah and I'm like you know that actually would work and then <laughs> I remember uh, saw him one time and I was just like I was just like hey hey Jeff how's the uh, how's the job as a transportation engineer and he's like oh hell man come on it's rather than uh, 
a uh, trash man. You call it a sanitation specialist. Or yes. A sanitation engineer. Yes, yeah, sanita- a sanitation worker. Yeah. Uh, that that's that's a more like muted way of saying it, uh, like a sanitation specialist. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's like that's like oh well. So what do you do? Do you handle like biohazard stuff like that? No, I just haul trash. <laughs> So you're a trash man. Exactly. Sanitation specialist. Exactly. Mom, it's a sanitation specialist. <laughs> oh God, we got off the rails a little bit, but let's take it. Let's bring I mean, it you back. You could in. use the same thing, really, like sanitation specialist for a janitor. As well. Yeah, exactly. Like that's the thing. I, I, it's just like you're a janitor. No, I'm a sanitation specialist. Like it's like really, what do you sanitize? The toilet seat where you sit your nasty fucking ass. Do, need I say more? Son of a bitch. Or trash man, you could just be like, oh, I am a physical waste disposal expert. Bingo! There you go. And <laughs> that's just like right here. Instead of, you know, a fat-ass reactor who just sits here and does nothing, it's just like, I am a content creator. <laughs> oh, God. We are influencers. Yes, exactly. We are influencers. We influence people to call us funny names on the internet exactly it, yeah and to all of the students from aim who are tuning in uh for the first time or for the last time uh thank you all very much for subscribing y'all have actually almost got us to two hundred and ninety three thousand subs so thank you all so much if you're wondering why i'm sitting here rubbing my eyes i'm a genius that owns a cat when i have allergies to cats so. oh well, I guess that's just, well, it's just part of the game. Necessitates some allergy eye drops. Fair enough. But having a fuzzy buddy is worth it. Exactly. Because he's a big, chunky fuzzy buddy. Yeah. His name's Bacon. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into this. This is three disturbing true trucker horror stories. And here we go. Oh, it's already on screen. Okay. <laughs> Also, I like how you uh, started this video off talking about lot lizards and then also greeted the kids from the thing that you <laughs> in the same thing. Well, they're, it's going to go over their heads. They're not going to know what that is. Hopefully. All I said was a sneaky rash. I've been a trucker for close to 15 years now. This happened to me in 2017. I was driving an overnight haul through the Mojave Desert in California, headed for a destination in Arizona. I think I was delivering appliances. I don't really remember. It was pitch black darkness in every direction. I know, right? The headlights on my semi were really dim at the time. Probably since last time. I'd been putting off getting them fixed forever. Yeah, that's right. Probably so. Usually I couldn't tell the difference, but since there were basically no other cars on the road, it was much more obvious. I remember having to strain my eyes every few minutes to make out the road in the distance. That could Wait have been a, a horror story in ah, of that's itself. Why it's being stupid. I was debating pulling over for a Sorry, couple everybody. hours and I'm waiting for sunrise, uh, but I didn't want to waste my time. Like, I yeah. desperately when needed on the, the edge money of the screen at the time, like that, so I kept driving, the, even the though it wasn't fully safe. I figured since it was basically a straight line, okay. it would be okay. We're good. I think it was about an hour before sunrise when I saw something approaching fast in the distance. Worried about hitting an animal, I slammed on the brakes. Yeah. As my truck screeched to a stop, I realized what was in front of me. A car with its hazards on. The weird thing was that it was in the exact middle of the road. Like, literally on the double yellow. Straddling, What was even weirder was that the passenger door was wide open. My truck stopped maybe a foot before hitting it. Not to toot my own horn, but I'm a pretty fearless guy. And I know my way around a bar fight. Because of this, I wasn't really scared when I saw the car. I was more curious than anything. I thought maybe someone needed a jump or something, so I reversed the semi and pulled over. I thought about throwing some flares down, but decided against it since I hadn't seen a single other car on the road besides this one. Mm. I got out of my truck and made my way over to the car. It was a warm, still night. I remember thinking how strange it was that there was almost no wind. It was also really quiet that night. The faint click of the hazards was the only sound in what felt like the entire desert. I got a little closer to the car. I vividly remember that it was a new looking red Ford Fusion. I approached the car a little cautiously. Like I said, the passenger door was wide open. I walked around the car and stopped in my tracks. It was completely empty. 
I made sure of it too, checking the back seat and anywhere someone might be laying down. There was literally no one inside. All of a sudden, I was much less sure about the situation. I was expecting someone to need help of some sort, maybe even someone who took a nap in a really dumb spot. I certainly wasn't expecting this though. The car was literally empty. I cast a few glances over my shoulder, feeling a lot more uneasy now. I kept whipping my head around, looking in every direction. Like that makes me it think felt that like someone was going to charge me or something. Got away from somebody else and probably got chased. That's what I'm thinking too, is just... Because that's the thing, in an emergency... Well, here's the thing, I would say that, uh, you know, the guy in the car would probably, you know, veer off the road and chase after the person in the car so that way it'd be easier for them to catch up depends on what the sides of the road are like. yeah the terrain if, if the terrain's bad then yeah got, if they got out and like went straight off a ditch like you know driving the car down there means that your car's fucking wrecked yeah so, true true i don't know what the terrain so they might have like. just smashed the lights the warning people that they were leaving their car there and got out to check give a chase or whatever yeah but Possibly even followed them out of the passenger side door. <clears throat> Probably so. The problem was, it was so dark that I couldn't see that far in front of me, except for what was lit up by my truck's headlights. It was eerie. I waited a while longer, thinking about getting back in my truck and forgetting about this whole thing. Someone was out there, somewhere. Against my better judgment, I decided to keep investigating. I looked inside the car, but everything seemed completely normal. The key oh, was even in the ignition. I the, the police the station engine. being like, there's an abandoned vehicle out here in the middle of the road. I have but one question. Did you lock your truck? That's a pretty good question. That's the thing. If I'm ever getting out, I am locking my fucking door. I am locking everything and... Hey, here's the thing, if I got a weapon on me, I'm taking the weapon with me. Because, here's the thing, if I'm getting jumped, I'm going down fighting. That's, like... Uh, I'm not going to stop off. and get out at night unless I come across an actual wreck. Like, in which case, like, I might. Because people might need first aid, you know, but... Like, I'm not getting out for anything suspicious like this. No, I'm just I... just gonna phone the police station and be like, Yeah, there's an abandoned vehicle out here in the middle of the fucking road. Like, y'all yeah. should send somebody out. Yeah, y'all need to get someone out here before and, like, get it off the road before someone, like, runs into it. Because that's a danger into itself. And there's certain other things I've seen, like, that if I ever see I'm pulling a full, like, reverse... Put it in reverse, Terry. Oh, there's nobody behind me. You know the one or that you turn if the if there's enough room for it. Oh, dude, the one that I saw. You do you remember that one? It's like the strips of like two by fours in the middle of the road with the nails sticking out of it. Mm. Do not stop. Mm. Turn the fuck like go in reverse. Get the fuck out of there. Somebody's done that on purpose. Exactly. They're waiting nearby for you to Ex stop. Exactly. Malicious intent is is evident. Mm either waiting on you to hit the boards or to get out to try to move them exactly and the like that like you have you have one choice in that matter that's the right choice hitting reverse getting the fuck out of there and honestly i and and calling the police and letting them know like yeah someone's got boards in the middle of the road down here i'm flagging down as many cars as i can to stop them but yeah like this it, it's bad got back out of the car and made my way over to the trunk. Oh, Might man. as well have a look, I figured. I went to open it, but it wouldn't budge. Locked. I grabbed the key out of the ignition and unlocked so the, the trunk. the other one has two vehicles Still... sitting exactly beside each other blocking a two-lane road. Yeah, that's... Night as well. Ooh, yeah, no. Especially if their lights are off. Yeah. Well, they want you to crash into it. They want they want you to fuck up. Because they're, they're trying to take something from you. Either your money, your vehicle, or your life. And I'm not will. And here's the thing. Or your holes. As I said, I I will die. I will die fighting before before they have a chance to do that. Like they can violate my holes after I'm dead. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Well, I don't care. You think I you think I give a fuck what a necrophiliac thinks? No. As far as I'm concerned, if I can take if I can take some down with me, I'm taking them down. 
Like I'm kicking, screaming, biting, like like I'm shitting not myself. Stopping. That's the thing. Huh? I'm not stopping. I'm not giving them a chance. No, I am. I'm not either. But in the rare circumstance that they do get their hands on me, like, mm, I'm doing everything everything I can to like fight back. Though the thing wouldn't budge. It was jammed from the inside somehow. I opened the back door and tried getting at the trunk through the back seat. To my surprise, it actually opened. There were three squished garbage bags back there, along with a rope that was tying the trunk closed. Ooh. I remember glancing one more time over my shoulder before reaching for them. The coast was clear. I must have been within five inches from one of the bags when the loudest gunshot I've ever heard rang out into the night. I slammed my head on the roof of the car in shock. I didn't even think. I threw the keys on the front seat and got out of the car as fast as I could. As I was climbing into my semi, I heard a grungy voice yelling in the distance. He yelled hey a bunch of times, and his voice seemed to be quickly approaching. I scrambled into the semi and turned it on. I threw it in gear as fast as I could. I remember cursing a bunch of times as the engine initially stalled, and that's when I saw it. As my truck began pulling out, I saw a person standing at the trunk of the car. It was a short, husky guy with red hair. He was wearing overalls and shin-high boots. In his left hand, he was holding a small shovel. In his right, though, was an old-looking hunting rifle. We locked eyes for a few seconds as my truck began to drive past him. He didn't move. I remember him not looking crazy or anything. He had this worried look on his face. As I passed him, he dropped his shovel and started waving his hands. He yelled wait a few times, but I wasn't staying there another this second. Driving straight down the middle As of I the drove road away, I footage. watched in the rear view. I don't know, that's dangerous though. That's very, very dangerous. You mirror as he ran after my truck for a few seconds before sprinting back to his car. It was clear he wanted me to stop, but there was absolutely no way I was going to do that. I stepped on it, pushing the semi much faster than I should have. I drove for like five minutes and started to think I was in the clear. But then, I saw headlights fast approaching behind me. I remember feeling more scared than I have ever felt in my entire life. I called the police and told them what happened to the best of my ability. That's when the car was basically right on my tail. It started honking like crazy at me. I honestly didn't know what to do, so I just kept driving, praying to God he wouldn't try and ram me. After like 15 minutes of this, he cut in front of me and hit his brakes, forcing me to slow down. I was just about to crash into him when finally some flashing police lights appeared ahead. The Ooh. Ford veered off to the right and sped into the desert, disappearing from sight. I pulled over and waited for the officer to show so up. I guess it wasn't that somebody I... got away from him. I don't know why their passenger door was left open, but I guess they were out there trying to bury bodies and didn't expect somebody to come along. They probably had their tools in the passenger seat and like and came back to get them. Could be that. And they were coming back to get the bodies after digging the hole. Here's the thing. If you're in the desert, uh, this is actually an old mob adage for like when the mob ruled uh, Las Vegas. Pre-dig your hole. Because if you're out there and you've already pre-dug your hole then all you're going to have to do is just throw the body in and bury the body instead of you spending all the time digging and risk someone coming by and finding the body. Next thing you know, you're having to dig another hole and then another hole. Before you know it, you've got five holes dug and it's not, and it's almost sunrise. Like I remember that in, in Casino. That was actually, that's actually like a funny thing that they said. I frantically told him what had happened, but the useless cop decided to get a report from me rather than chase the guy down. I was so pissed about that. I told the guy like twice that he could probably catch up to him if he left now. The cop told me not to worry and that they'd do a thorough search as soon as backup arrived. He sent me on my way and said they'd call me if they ever had an update for me. They never did. None of my buddies have a story this crazy, and I've told it more times than I can count. I know what you're probably thinking. That guy was definitely burying bodies. That doesn't really explain why he had such a small shovel or why he tried to follow me. The bags in his trunk were also too small for that, although some of my buddies think he might have done some dismembering. Yeah. For my own sanity, I like to think that he was burying some other kind of animal. I would say probably burying money, too. That could be another thing. Because burying your money in the desert and then logging the GPS coordinates and, lo and then like having them at your disposal, 
Basically, it guarantees you a nest egg just in case shit goes bad. Maybe yeah, the only thing is, don't... is, like, if you weren't burying bodies, like, why would you be so worried about a trucker having seen you out there, you know? I don't know. That's the, that you see, once again, there's things about this that I'm, I'm just trying to make the logical, like, understanding of. But I think that if someone was burying money or something like that, like anything but bodies, really, like if they were out there burying that, then they probably they still might have shot the gunshot as a warning shot because like, hey, what the fuck are you doing with my car? You know, yeah, kind of thing. But I don't think they would have followed you after that. They would just been like, what the fuck was that about? You know? Yeah. Well, um, they would have checked and been like, well, everything's still here, so. Like, but the fact that it was bodies in the trunk would be like, you know, well, person's capable of killing, so they're like, hey, like a new victim, I'm gonna chase him down. Yeah, <clears throat> but also people are willing to kill over a shit ton of money too. I mean, yeah, but if he didn't take the money, no, but that's the thing. Why? It's the fact that he knows uh, the vicinity of where the money is. Maybe. And the, and and you see. Once again, it's better to have no witnesses than, than you know, than risk it at all. I guess it depends on what kind of person they were, like, burying the money. You know, if they were, like, a mob person, I guess they probably would also have very well, little qualms about killing well, people. Well, red hair, overalls, and boots, I would say they were probably just, uh, they were probably an Okie from, like, they were probably just, like, a like an Okie from the sticks that was just trying to, like, that had some money and was just trying to stash it away somehow, some way. I don't know. But if it was bodies, which, uh, number one, I think it's bodies. Like, that's my number one theory. Number two, I would probably say money. Uh, and number three, um, like, personal belongings or something. I don't know. But, or a lot of drugs. Maybe. Or drugs. That's the other thing, too. <clears throat> I mean, there's a lot of drug mules that are ordered to hide their shit until, like, they're needed, and then they yeah. can go and pick it up. It's like, why would you keep, like, you know huge bags of drugs in your house when you could put them away somewhere that nobody's gonna find them for sure. Yeah, I... Until you uh, need to re-up. I've never... I've never... Uh, okay, this is a little bit of a confession for me, but I... I I was a little bit of a drug mule. I... I did that for Still money in sure college. we should actually talk about that on a public hold on. forum. On hold on. Hold on. Let me... Hold on. Just in case. Uh... Uh, within five years of the commission of the offense, so I'm I'm safe, but I still I still may not risk it. I'm not gonna give full details, but I will say this: I I did it for a while, and it I I really wish I would never have, but I needed the money, so yeah. Dog out of its misery, or some dangerous oh, shit. Forgot to put it back up on screen. Sorry. Snakes. I really have no idea. Either way, I've never been totally comfortable driving through deserts late at night after this experience. I wouldn't either. Juan Ramirez. I'm sure you've seen some of the more modern videos online where truckers will document their daily routines and provide tips for each other. Yeah. Or maybe you haven't. But, being as I'm on the younger side in this industry, every time I open TikTok or YouTube Shorts, that's all I see. I won't get into it, but I had to drop it's out of a pretty algorithm. prestigious like, university for some reasons. I've never seen reasons, them, but I've so. never searched up anything about trucking. Like, so. Yeah. Also, People if you just talk about trucking in the vicinity of your phone, your speaker picks that up. So, there's a trucking, chance that I might... Trucking. 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 Stop it. <laughs> trucking. I like my algorithm. Stop fucking mine up. Anyways, but yeah, there's a chance that after this video that we might see stuff like that on our phones because our phones are always listening. Yes. Tell me I could have been more than a trucker. It's honestly not a bad gig, though. I've been making deliveries for north of two years. Obviously, the only strenuous part of the job is the long hours. You can never truly gauge how the isolation will affect you without experiencing it firsthand. My only advice would be to make peace with whatever demons might be lurking in your subconscious, because they'll definitely eat at your brain in the lonely hours. That's what happened to me, anyway. 
This happened to me three months after getting employed by my first company. That's a 3D, that's a 3D as render as right there. I think one... that's a blender render. Because that's... Blender render. Yeah. I was driving from southern New Jersey to Lafayette, Indiana. A 12-hour drive. Ooh. 12 hours man. driving might not seem that crazy, but factor in the fact that I just completed an 8-hour trip, and that should put things into perspective. Yeah. I wanted to get deliveries done as quickly as possible, so I opted to drive through the night. I'd get to Lafayette just before 3 a.m. Things were going smoothly. There were virtually no other cars on the road, so I was able to push the semi a little faster than normal. About halfway through the drive, I remember reaching down at the center console to chug a Red Bull, but there weren't any. Of course, I had forgotten to restock my truck after completing my previous delivery. After slapping my dashboard a few times, I groaned in frustration, knowing I'd have to stop somewhere. There was nothing I hated more than having to make stops during my drives. I might be unique in this, but I always get exponentially more tired when my vehicle is immobile, even if I'm only stopped for like 20 seconds. After glancing up at the navigation, I figured I had no choice. Either fall asleep on the road, or stop and get an energy drink. In my brain, those options were pretty much equivalent. Reluctantly, I pulled into the first service stop I saw. I had literally no clue where I was, probably somewhere in Ohio at this point. Mm. Too late, I realized this wasn't actually a service stop. It was what looked like an abandoned gas station and a repurposed convenience store. I'm not sure if there's any better way to describe it. Either way, it looked like there was another quick stop store not far up the road, so I figured I'd go there if anything. I parked the semi and made my way over to the first convenience store. To be completely honest, I was expecting one of two things to happen. Either the place would be open or the door would be locked. You can imagine my surprise then when the door swung open into a pitch black store. I looked around, hoping maybe I'd get lucky and there would be a drink or snack left behind. Just before I was about to turn around, my eyes adjusted to the darkness, and I picked up on a faint glow emanating from the corner of the room. I made my way over to it, and the glow turned out to be coming from a back room of some sort. Curiosity got the better of me, and I opened the door slowly. To my pleasant surprise, there was a plugged-in refrigerator against the wall. Eagerly, Maybe you can I chalk door, it up to just being really fucking tired, but this sounds like a boneheaded decision. It is a boneheaded decision. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, the second that I, like, saw that it was dark inside the store, I would have turned around and went back to the truck, you know? Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd have been like... The other one. I'd have, I would have been like... It, imagine if it had one of those doorbell things, like those door things you open up, instead of going, boom, boom, instead of going, boom, boom. <laughs> I just imagined it. Found nothing. Literally nothing. The shelves had literally been removed. Like the whole appliance had been gutted. As I was shutting the door, I was 90% certain I heard a clatter from the main room. Like something hitting the floor. I froze for a good 10 seconds. Had I imagined it? Going there was no way. Quietly, I walked back into the main room and looked around. Nothing. Part of me wanted to keep investigating. I didn't have time for this, though. I walked out the entrance door and basically jogged to the other shop. It was open, thank God. I paid for my drink and made it back to my truck. Something about this whole stop felt... wrong. I needed to get back on the road as soon as possible. I took one last glance at the abandoned store and noticed the door was now open. I was 100% positive I had shut it behind me. It wasn't my job to figure out what was going on here, though. So I started the engine and merged my semi back onto the highway. The caffeine started kicking in and snapped me out of my tired haze pretty quickly. My mind began to wander, and I started thinking about how bizarre that whole thing had actually been. I guess a squad or an abandoned building wasn't the strangest thing in the world, but my brain couldn't explain that refrigerator no matter what theory I thought of. I tried to forget about it and kept driving. It was then that I started noticing weird movements in the curtain behind me. Oh, oh God, in heaven. Uh, yeah, because that's the thing. that I, I can imagine just you like... Lock you, his truck. Yeah, lock your truck. Because all of a sudden, you just hear behind you just be like, Hey, turn the radio up. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Sweat started dripping down my forehead. 
I watched in the rearview mirror as the curtain seemed to billow and move, even though I didn't have the air on. I thought the worst. There was someone in my truck. I didn't have any weapons on me or anything, so I discreetly mm. punched in the nearest police station on my phone. Nope, I am... I, okay, if I'm a long-haul truck driver, I'm at least packing me a pistol. I'm getting my license to carry, and I'm packing me a pistol. That too. Yeah. I... I but a nice one thing, like I want, I want the best defense possible if I'm gonna be a long haul truck driver, because there's a bunch of freaks out there, and I ain't willing to be, and I ain't gonna be a victim. The drive there was the most tense and horrifying 20 minutes of my life. I kept imagining that person reaching out to grab me or trying to crash my truck. Finally, I approached the police station. I stopped the semi as close as I possibly could get and basically ran over to the police station. In seconds, my truck was surrounded by police, and after I opened the back, what I saw will stay with me for life. The police pulled out three homeless-looking people, two men and one woman. They were wearing rags and were wrapped in nasty-looking blankets. One of the men was armed with two switchblades. All three of them refused to talk, Jeez. but stared menacingly at me as they were getting cuffed. I have no idea what they wanted. Yeah, stare menacingly all you want, you assholes. Yeah, you, like, you got into his truck without his permission. It's like, well, he's not using the back seat, man. Go fuck yourself. I don't think I'll ever know. I don't know. With, uh, that many of them thinking they can get in there, like, without getting caught. I don't think their plan was to not get caught. I think their plan was to... Wait a bit and do something to him, probably. Maybe. Either that or just, like, get as many miles as they could without being noticed, which... Here's the thing. It could be that. They could have been waiting, hoping for him to make another stop down the road where they could get back out. Well, yeah, because... As, as I've heard a lot of people say when it comes to cars, sure beats walking. Goodness. My name is Kevin. I've been a trucker for varying companies for the better part of 15 years now. Things have become pretty routine at this point. Pick up the goods and materials, verify them for accuracy, and deliver them as instructed. We're not paid Ooh. by the hour, so Did efficiency is the what? most important thing in this line. Oh, wait. Rewind a little bit and watch the car that's right behind the truck. We're not paid truck. materials, verify them for accuracy, and deliver I, I them as right instructed. There. We're not so paid go, go by back the hour, verify them. Things have become pretty routine at this point. Pick up the goods and materials, over in the verify them lane, for accuracy, the and deliver like them right as there, instructed. He drifts like really close We're to not that car. The the yeah, way. the other car actually had to get over yeah, to like... like... What the fuck, man? Like, he well, acted like he was going to try to pass the truck or something. <laughs> well, here's the thing. They're on like they're on broken lines, so they're allowed to pass, but that's the thing. Yeah, you don't want to try to pass around a truck that big when you can't see around. No, it. especially on a blind curve like that. Because yeah. the curve, like, where, you're, where the curve's going this way, you can't see... Now, if you're going around a curb where you can see around the truck, and therefore you can gauge distance, like well, if it, it's a smaller vehicle, yeah, where you can see around it. Well, yeah, no, well, around a smaller vehicle, yeah, you probably would have no problem with a smaller vehicle on this curb, but with a truck, like a, passing a truck on a on a on a on a road like this is dangerous enough, but on a blind curb like this, no, you're like that's you're asking for trouble. Hours, so efficiency is the most important thing in this line of work. For someone like me who has been doing this forever, I like to think I can outwork all these young guns that are snapping these jobs up. This isn't always great though. Usually I push myself to the absolute limit when it comes to functioning on barely any sleep. Four years ago, I was working for a warehouse based in North Dakota. For anyone who doesn't know, North Dakota is one of the flattest states which makes trucking a little easier. Yeah. This also meant that skipping out on a few hours of sleep could mean the difference between employment and getting the sack. It was a chilly Tuesday morning in May. It's ridiculous. The beginning so of the week meant that more that. low... What? Like, oh, just sack... Like... Like, the companies, like, put expectations on truck drivers that, like, cause them to, like, be driving around sleep-deprived. That's absurd. Well, that's the thing. It's is... incredibly dangerous to them and everybody else on the road. It is. I agree. And that's why I think that truck driving duos are are definitely a must when it comes to, like, 
super long, like super long, like truck drives. Because here's the thing: having yourself a driving buddy that you're paying a little, you're like you're not paying as much because you know it's your rig. Therefore, it, like the risk is on you. But if you have a driving buddy with you who can drive with you, and you're still paying him a, fa a like a like a fair amount. As long as, like, you know, and it's just like, oh, if you meet expectations, you get a bonus. Like, all right, bud, I'll give you, like, 30% of the bonus if you're cool with that. And there you go. Basically, I think, I've heard, like, there's truckers that do that. They call up a buddy to, like, hey, man, you mind taking, like, a taking like a leg of, uh, leg of a trip down with me to Texarkana? It's like, all right, man, uh, how much, like, how much you paying? It's like, I can give you, like, 25%. Call it 30 and you got a deal. All right, let's go. And there you go needed to be shipped, which meant more work for me. I wanted to knock it all out in one shot, so I traced my route into Montana accordingly, planning on not stopping even once to sleep. I hit the road a few hours after lunch, expecting to reach my destination very early the next morning. I pushed the semi as much as possible, doing maybe a couple over the speed limit. It was getting late, and I remember rubbing the crust from my eyelids as the clock ticked past midnight. I was having trouble keeping uh. my eyes open, but I only had about an hour left in this drive. So I gritted my teeth and kept going. 24 my buddy hours. Tristan, who was also a trucker, introduced me to smelling salts when I first started out. Oh, God. If you don't know. Oh, God. I was going to say, is the Juji Mufu? The Juji Mufu uh, smelling salts? Have you ever seen, like, Joe Rogan and them do the smelling salts on his podcast? Joey Diaz did it one time. Joey's just like, Joey's like, that eh, can't be that bad. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> he's like, okay, I got this nose. Let me get this nose. Ah, ah. <laughs> and then they were just like, they were just like, how's it, how's it feel, Joe? He's like, could you imagine smoking one of these motherfuckers? <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Joey Diaz. Smelling salts are basically some kind of crystals in a little bottle. Yeah. One sniff and you're wide awake. You had to be careful though. Too many back-to-back -to -back uses could be dangerous. Or at least that's what Tristan told me. They burn your nose a little bit, but whenever I needed a boost, I'd reach for the smelling salts first. Woo! This was one of I those times. I was kind of wondering exactly what they I would smell like. Um, some, uh, well, uh, from my experience, seeing people's like reaction, a very I'm strong like ammonia. Scared to find out. It's, it's like a very strong like ammonia Ooh, smell. Oh, I would hate that then. No, well, that's the thing. You're not supposed to like it. It's supposed yeah. to wake your ass up, and like God, me... that's such a bad smell. Oh, it is. No, it is. Oh God. Speaking of ammonia, my dad accidentally. Uh, my dad, when he was uh, cleaning the the bathtub one time, he accidentally mixed ammonia and bleach. Yep, and he made chlorine gas. Great. Yeah, and he almost died. I will never forget him running out of the bathroom and just, like, hacking up a storm. Like, he literally, like, he ran out of the bathroom, went outside, was, like, snot dribbling out of his nose, coughing up a lung, and he was, like, asking me to bring him water and, like, and, like, and just, like, I'm, like, dude, like, what happened, Dad? He's just, like, I don't know. And then I went in there and I looked and I could smell it and I put the thing over, I put my thing over my nose I was, like, Oh God, Dad! Come on! Like, and I told him what he did, and he was just like, he was just like, I didn't know that was a thing. Did he go to the ER? Yeah, he did. He went to the doc. He went to the doctor's office, and they they basically just gave him like, uh, gave him like this uh, like nasal like there's like a nasal spray and like a and basically they told him like if he could like do a breathing treatment and and he did. Uh, my my grandma was an asthmatic, and she had a she had like extra breathing machines with like uh, with like the fluid and everything. So she let my dad borrow it a little bit. And yeah, um, yeah, just let that be a note, kids. Uh, avoid ammonia and bleach mixing together because you could die. It get very very bad. Big whiff and shot my head back. My reflexes taking over. I felt the adrenaline course through my body and I hoped the feeling would last the rest of the drive. A half hour shot by, and I was really struggling. I felt myself start to doze off, and the blare of my truck drifting into the shoulder jolted me awake. This was getting dangerous, I thought. I had to pull off. I was all alone on the highway, but there was nowhere to pull off. There was just woods on either side of me. 
I slowed the truck down, searching desperately for somewhere to pull over. At this low speed, my headlights pierced through the darkness and I was able to see a lot more. As I looked around, I saw something that confused me. There was a purple dress lying in the middle of the road. What the hell? Huh? I thought, rubbing my eyes. Was I hallucinating? I blinked like six times just to make sure I wasn't going crazy. It was real. I approached the dress with my truck and stared at it as I rolled by. In hindsight, this should have been more of a red flag, but I think I was just too exhausted to process what was going on. About 200 or so yards away, I passed a pair of shoes. Now I was starting to freak out. What the hell was going on? I passed the shoes, praying to God there would be a place to pull off soon. My old man, David, was a super religious guy, so I clutched his old cross and hoped he would come through for me. A little further up the road, I saw a bunch more random clothing, some of which looked like little kids' clothing. Oh, this time, no. I stopped the truck. The panic started to set in. Something was very, very wrong. I sat in the driver's seat with the truck yeah, at a standstill. I would standstill. just be thinking that somebody had driven by that had their... Uh had like a bag of clothes in their trunk and they didn't they, like their trunk was broken and or they forgot to close it and some just shit. kept flying out yeah fly, flew out of the trunk or something yeah like I, i've passed like random clothes on the road before i never thought anything of it really mm. I passed a shoe on the road before and i'm like how did somebody leave a fucking shoe on the road like, yeah i passed a weave in the middle of the road <laughs> no joke it was in atlanta and uh i remembered as me and mom were driving through, I saw it, and I was just like, holy shit, mom, it's a weave. And she's like, what's a weave doing in the middle of the road? I'm like, mom, we're in Atlanta. Like, like you, you're going to see a tumble weave coming, coming through every now and again. <laughs> and, and then mom was just like, drive by again real quick. And I'm like, okay, well, let's drive by again. I drove by again, and Mom got my phone and started playing Welcome to Atlanta by Jermaine Dupri and Ludacris, and she recorded the, the, the weave in the middle of the road as we drove by. Welcome to Atlanta. <laughs> oh, God. We were laughing for like a solid like 30 minutes over that. The tumble weave of Atlanta. I was expecting something to happen, but it never did. So I did what my instincts told me to do. I stepped out of the truck and went to inspect the clothing. I still remember the feeling of the chilly morning air piercing my skin, which definitely helped my exhaustion. I approached the pile as cautiously as I could. It was indeed kid's clothing. It looked like there were both boy and girl pieces of clothing in the pile. I looked around into the woods, but I couldn't see much of anything in the darkness. I had my head on a swivel, worried that this was some kind of trap. I decided it was not my business to figure out what was going on, so I made my way back to my truck. Just then, I heard a crunch from the left. I whipped around, trying to see what was there. I stood there, waiting to hear another sound. After about 30 seconds, there was another crunch, but this time from the opposite side of the road. My survival instincts kicked in, and I sprinted towards the truck. I jumped into the front seat, but just before I slammed the door, I heard a child's scream ring out. I froze, my heart bursting out of my chest. I was caught in a crossroads. I wasn't going to fight some random people in a pitch black woods, but I couldn't just abandon some helpless kids either. Before I could make a decision, another almost identical child's scream rang out. Without thinking, I turned the truck on and pointed its nose toward the spot in the woods where I heard the noise. Oh my god. My headlights lit up about 30 yards into the woods. There were three or four people, one of whom was holding a massive speaker. They ducked behind a couple trees as my oh. truck lit them up, but I had exposed them for the just enough time to make out what they were speaker. doing. They hid from the light before I could really make out any distinctive features, but I swear on my old man David's grave, they were holding up a speaker trying to lure me into the woods with a fake kid screaming. I was just in shock. I just sat there, staring at the trees those people had just hid behind. I reached for my phone to call the police, but before I finished dialing, I heard a thump from the body of the truck. Someone had thrown something from the other direction. I was done. I turned back to face the road and slammed on the gas. As I sped off, I could make out a person on the other side of the road. 
He shouted something I couldn't understand before launching something at the truck that cracked the glass of my passenger side window. Ooh. I drove the final hour in silence. I was too scared to process what had just happened, but there was no way in hell I was stopping to sleep in those woods. No. It completed my delivery and then knocked out. I must have slept for 10 hours straight. When I woke up, the first thing I did was call the police, who told me they'd investigate those woods and give me any updates. I then thought about the whole thing and how stupid I was to get out of my truck. I should have just minded my own business. But the thought of some kids being kidnapped or worse was just too much for me to ignore. To this day, I still have no... On. Yeah, and that's the thing. is like I, In that situation, I probably would like get a heart have a heart about the kid too but at the same time what he did was smart whenever he pointed his lights at the forest to see if he could see anything and when he saw the the dudes out there i was like oh especially with the speaker because that speaker <coughs> is a dead fucking giveaway <coughs> for like for like yeah just yeah pure freaking chicanery but yeah anyway no idea what those people were trying to do. I don't know why they didn't just rush me when they had the chance, or what they were planning to do to me if I ran out in the woods after the kids screaming. In all my years of being a trucker, nothing has ever come close to being as strange or downright terrifying as this experience. Damn. Okay. Well, there you go. It's a pretty creepy story. No doubt about it. Like all three of them were actually pretty good. I would say, I would say the third one, prop because of the children's scream, that one really set me off. Uh, and then of course the, uh, you know, I would say, um, I don't know. I would probably say the uh, the second one. Uh, the second one was, I would say, like knowing that there's someone behind you. And you just, you're trying to play it off nonchalantly. It's just like you're trying to play it off as though, you know, you don't know. And you're just hoping and praying that they don't try to make a move. That, that's terrifying to me. And then, of course, you know, the first story, I mean, you know, just the red-headed dude in the overalls, that's definitely like the, that's definitely kind of terrifying as well. Super suspect. Yeah. I would probably say, for me, the third one's probably the scariest one, in my in my opinion. What about you? I don't know. Like the second one's pretty unnerving. Yeah. And the first one's also pretty unnerving as well, because if not for the timing of the police showing up and they did, he might have been in trouble. No doubt about it. Did you hear that? Yeah, that's the that's the toilet upstairs. Sounded like that kid screaming. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was going to say, you know, the sweet sound of a toilet flushing. No, it's the sound of a child screaming. That's that's literally what the, our toilet makes that sound. So <laughs> imagine that anytime like we flush the toilet, it's like ah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anywho, I think that's going to do it. So thank you all very much for tuning in. And until next time, I'm Nate. I am Nick. Y'all be good people. Be safe. Take care. Peace.